it's now to time to analyze case number one which is essentially when alpha one is greater than alpha two so remember our selectivity we said before that essentially selectivity this come from our formal definition of the rate of reaction of the d and the rate of reaction of the undesired you know this is essentially this here and this one is this one right here so let's analyze the case in which alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 we're going to ignore by now at this moment these guys so let's just pay our attention in the concentrations now alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 reaction order of D is higher so that's good that means maybe we have this here which is cool because as we increase CA this will be a square effect and this will be only linear effect so we have three times here we will have nine times whereas we will have here only three so anyways let's do a more formal mathematical approach alpha 1 minus alpha 2 let's call it the difference let's call it A and A of course is it's a positive value because you know this is slower and this is uh, this is less than a alpha 1 and this is more than alpha 2 so we can substitute this data you know that CA alpha 1 CA alpha minus 2, 2 means CA alpha 1 minus alpha 2 so we got this value now alpha, since alpha at any or since this A at any moment will be always positive we want to keep the concentration of A as high as possible because if we're not moving this we are only moving concentration we want to increase the concentration we don't want low values, we want huge values we have huge values, we're going to increase this number which is the selectivity which is the thing we want to improve so hopefully it gets clear to you it's the easiest case scenario just when alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 just be sure to keep the concentration as high as possible now how do you do that? well the first thing you want to avoid is you have inert material in inert material why? because the volume increases so when you have this and if you have this as nitrogen and you are using oxygen and your reactant is oxygen well all this is space the concentration of oxygen here in the whole system is lower as if you had the whole system with oxygen even though maybe it's the same amount here you want to avoid that okay this concentration will be higher what next uh, you want to well that's for the case of gas now for the case of liquid you want to avoid the dilute material so maybe you have this and you have a very concentrated su substance and you want to add water so you will have higher volume here uh, you don't want that because you're going to increase once again the volume and if the volume increases the concentration decreases remember that this is small divided by volume so if you increase the volume and you leave the molars here at the same quantity well you're going to dilute that concentration also avoid recycle streams why recycle stream because many times the recycle stream will increase the volumetric flow rate or the volume flow rate and not always maybe if you have like 1000 here and you got very concentrated one gram mole here but you got one gram mole for every 10,000 mole well this one gram mole will do nothing against this 10,000 mole so just be sure don't include uh, recycle streams don't include inert material or dilutant and if you really want to increase the concentration use a batch reactor or a PFR why? because the concentration in this type of reactor starts very high for example you have the batch you fill all with A and eventually it's going to turn out to form B as you can see this is full high concentration of A PFR because you start with high concentrations and you start reacting so as it reacts the concentration of A is going to decrease so here is high here is low now what you should avoid is the CSTR because even though well first of things first 
they are perfectly mixed so even though you add it here and you think that maybe this is going to be high concentration no but we are modeling a super perfect mixture so it will get dilute very fast so the concentration will be actually the one on the out or at the final concentration so you don't want that you don't want the patch you want the PFR and you want this one here guys that was case one now let's do case two is essentially what happens when alpha one is less than alpha two well in that case let's we will need to change this alpha two minus alpha one will be b and b must be a positive number and remember we have this definition let's force alpha two minus alpha one then we send it down here and you know this we just set the value to b so this is b we set b now ignore for this moment the k values let's pay attention only on concentration you can just see that if b increases then selectivity should decrease so you want to decrease b how do you decrease b you need to well did not sorry you cannot change this sorry you need to change the concentration on a so if you increase the concentration on a this will get higher higher or more 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 and you know that something divided by a huge number is almost zero and we don't want that we don't want our selectivity to be zero we want our selectivity to be huge so how do you make a division uh, higher or grow well essentially you just need to make it very very low so one divided by 0 0.000001 will give you a huge number and that's what we want so once again let me show you here here when we want it because it's up we want it to increase concentration of A but in this case it's down so we want to decrease concentration of A how do we do that how do we make concentration slow as possible well, we use inert materials, so imagine we're going to dilute the system, so imagine this 80% is inert material, the volume increases, the concentration decreases. Same with the dilute material. And what type of reactor shall we use? Well, we already discussed that. Don't use a batch and don't use a PFR. You want to use a reactor that has a initial concentration very, very low. And what's that? The case will be the CSTR. So you pour this and even though the concentration here might be very high, because it's perfectly mixed and it has a huge volume and etc., you're going to decrease the concentration almost instantaneously. So you want to get the CSTR for this type of reaction. Case number two. Now this is what I'm going to do in the next video, but we are going to now analyze this. We've seen the concentrations terms here, remember? But now it's time to analyze the K constant. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.